Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 360. This is the one and only holiday Christmas winter release for Simply Defined and they just happen to be kaleidoscope dies. So if you don't know what Simply Defined is or what a kaleidoscope layering die is, don't wait, we'll get there. I also have for you new paper <laughs> from Simply Define because frankly I had trouble finding it so I went out and did it myself and then on top of all of that I have a flash sale for you an amazing flash sale and it's on product that I think was not given the opportunity that it should have been given but one company's oopsies is our wahoo kachoo. <laughs> so before I get to all of that, let me do winner winner chicken dinner for you because it is a it's a loaded class today. So let me get to winner winner chicken dinner and then I'm going to tilt down. I'm going to walk through some of the product for you in the beginning because we're going to start with the flash sale product and then work into the kaleidoscope dies. And, um, and there's a good reason for that, and you'll, you'll see. So our winner winner chicken dinners from YouTube number 359, I've got them right here. How do you become a winner winner chicken dinner? Well, don't you wanna win a $25 gift card? Yes, yes you do. And it's so easy, because you just never know when I'm gonna call your name. First things first, there's a little heart down there because I heart you and it has SMS in the middle of the heart. If you move your mouse cursor right over that, a little bar will come out that says subscribe. You have to be a subscriber for a chance to be a winner winner chicken dinner. You just do. It's the only way you can post a comment on this YouTube. So see that little heart button? little heart. I would sing something, but I get in trouble for copyright infringement. So <laughs> no, not this way, this way. <laughs> Run your mouse cursor over there. That should be a little subscribe button. Click it and help me get to a hundred thousand followers, subscribers. So I get my YouTube plaque and my two boys age 18 and 19 can, can say, wow, mom. <laughs> I think when I finally get it, I'm going to mount it in the kitchen on the refrigerator. That way they have to see it every day. Cause you know how often kids are like in the refrigerator and out of the refrigerator. And so I think I'm gonna put it right on the refrigerator for them. Anyway, subscribe, leave a comment on this YouTube, and then we approve your comment, assuming it's kind, and you go into the running to be a winner winner chicken dinner we pick two every week and you win a $25 gift card so these two people that I'm about to announce did just that they subscribed thank you they posted a comment thank you that was kind thank you and now I bet they never thought they were ever going to win. Most people never think they're going to win and they'll back up the YouTube and they'll call in their family and they'll watch it again and they'll scream and do the happy dance and the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. So be that person. You never know when it's going to be your turn. Our first winner, winner, chicken dinner from YouTube number 359 was, and remember it was the product from Redesign, which is a Prima brand, the molds and the modeling material and the perfect pearls and the marabou alcohol inexpensive markers it was great you may want to use this $25 for some of that or my recommendation is you use the $25 for some of this on the flash sale okay first winner winner chicken dinner is Barbara Barbara Breyer hello Barbara Breyer is that you are you going no yes no Yes! <laughs> it's your turn, Barbara. Congratulations. You're a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. But you're not alone because we always do too. Our second winner, winner is Susie. Susie Oliver. Hello, Susie. Is that you? Because if it is, you too are like Barbara, probably going, no. Yes, honest, there you are. You're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. What do you have to do to claim your prize? Nothing, absolutely nothing. I will go ahead and I will put the $25 gift card into your online account, assuming you have one. 
If you do not, well, then you do have to do something. You have to let me know that you don't have an account. You need to set one up and then email me saying, okay, I have an online account now. Please put my winnings in because you want to spend that $25 on anything that makes your heart happy. Isn't it nice just to, to, to get something that you weren't expecting and then when it comes to you in the mail, it's just a happy day. It really is. So. Barbara and Susie, we have to do the winner winner chicken dinner dance. I expect you to be standing up and moving, or at least sitting down and moving. <laughs> you're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. All right, girls, I'm so happy for you. And the rest of you, thank you so much for all of your support. <laughs> all of your comments, your kind words, and your emails during what has been one of the hardest times I've ever had. Well, gosh, I've had a lot of things, but this pandemic has definitely been up there with them. So we're, we're glad to still be here. We're glad to still be in business. We are still a very skeleton crew, but at least we're a crew. And if, if we didn't have all of you, then we wouldn't have any of this. So bless you for all of that. All right, girls. Enjoy spending your money, and I think I'm going to tilt down. I'm going to show you a couple samples, and then I'm going to start with the flash sale. Please keep in mind, flash sale products are limited, and we've got them at a rock star price. I mean, it's crazy what I'm bringing them to you. Somebody else's oopsies is our Wahoo Kachu. <laughs> and then Please remember my simply defined dyes, especially the kaleidoscopes, are limited. So I have an I want it all bundle for you on that and um, I also have them open stock. So if you're a kaleidoscope collector of simply defined, just know once you, you already know when they're gone it's very hard to get them back. We have to wait for somebody to not pay for their order or cancel their order and that's the only way they come back. They are a one and done. Okay, I'm going to tilt down for today. We're going to get started. It's good to see you. Wait till you see. <laughs> Wait till you see. <laughs> I have to tell you, this is so bad. I'm going to get in so much trouble for this. These products were at Michael's and at Hobby Lobby. They are amazing products. Truly, they are amazing products. But because they don't have somebody there to tell you how to use them or to teach you how to use them, well, Michaels and Hobby Lobby liked them more than you did because they probably had, uh, you know, somebody from the company come and show them how to use them. And they're like, oh, these are awesome. And they are. But then they got in their store and there was nobody there to teach you how to use them. So they had to clearance them out. Michaels is all done. They're all gone. And Hobby Lobby may still have a few little drips and drabs left. But then the opportunity fell into my lap to bring them to you for an amazing price because, well, Michael said, sorry, they didn't sell. We don't want any more. <laughs> Had they shown you how to use them, I think they would have flown off the shelves. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo for me <laughs> and you. <laughs> now remember, there is a place for Michael's Hobby Lobby and Joanne's. Absolutely. We totally believe in a place for everybody. And we believe in a place for all other online stores. And most importantly, we believe you should shop at your local independent retailer if you have one. So if you only have Michaels and Hobby Lobby, we'll cherish them for what they're able to bring you. But then go online to figure out how to use it. <laughs> all right, I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started. Bye. I know I'm going to get some hate mail. <laughs> I know I am, but that's okay. It's the truth. <laughs> I'm going to just... Scroll on up and I'm going to show you samples first and then I'm going to show you product. Okay, so this is Elena and she made this card and it is using one of my kaleidoscope dies to build that angel and the background. This is a die. So you can see the layering in her. A kaleidoscope die is comprised of four A2 size dies, four full A2 size dies for $29.99. Not an A2 size background. I know some people on this on their backgrounds get 20 bucks just for one A2 size die. That would have been $80 for the set, but oh no, 
$29.99 and you get Joy to the World and Oh Holy Night and Hark the Herald Angels Sing on top of that. So I'll show that to you later, but I wanted to show you Elena's Angel. Let me put that one back. Then I have Miss Belinda and her Snowflake. And again, it's layered. Layer after layer sitting on top of each other to create a stunner of an image. So these are my kaleidoscope dies. It is a one and done, and this is the only Christmas release I am doing for this year. That's Belinda. Put you back on. And here is Doris. Again, all kaleidoscope sets are made of four separate dies: a background die and three layering dies. She didn't use the background die on this one, but all three layering dies have been used here. So I'm going to put these aside. I'm going to come back to my kaleidoscope dies. And first, I think we're going to start with the flash sale product. Okay, so there's two different bundles for you. Bundle A and bundle B. I know they look just like makeup, right? And I think that's where the confusion came in is that they looked just like makeup, but they're not. These are soft pastels marketed to look cute and clever like a makeup case. And they are, it's cute and clever, but I think when you saw it at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you were like, I don't get it. I don't know what to do with it. And unfortunately, there's probably nobody here to help me explain what to do with it and or help explain it to me. So this product is from Jane Davenport, who is a doll. I have had dinner with her and her husband and we had a blast. She talks as much as I do. It was a very long night and she's just fun and quirky and clever and talented. She's got more talent in her pinky than I do in my whole body, but bless her pea picking heart, she is great. She put these palettes together. This is all metallics all metallics and again soft pastels what is a soft pastel well have you ever heard of pan pastels have you ever heard of susan's gardens susan tyranny she uses pa uh, she, i think she even has her own um collection of pan pastels soft pastels are a creamy pastel maybe you've seen pastels in uh, like a a chalk form where it's like a, a chalky and you color it and move it along. No, these are a little more creamy and easier to use. But unless somebody explains to you that it's not makeup and you don't want to use this as eyeshadow, nor do you want to use eyeshadow for your crafts. It is not made to do that. It is not um, acid free and everything that you're going to want to make sure that your craft stands the test of time, whatever you have made for somebody. So soft pastels, easy to use. Two different bundles and they're only being sold as a bundle. These retailed for $19.99. All the lovely colors. So these would have been $40 for the two. We're doing the two for $17.99. She's upside. Oh, no, she's not upside down. The two for $17.99. Not even a BOGO, not even a buy one, get one. We're doing both for $17.99. And if you need Christmas gifts, holy smokes, artichokes. Now, if you're saying, huh, I've never played with pan or pastels before, and I'm not sure I want to invest $17.99 in two that I might not love, you will love them. But that's okay. I understand. That's where these sets come in. These sets retailed for $13.99, so $28. How about both for $7.99? Uh-huh, I'm telling you, there's something here for every price point. And if you've never played with soft pastels, this is a fabulous way to introduce yourself to them. And if you're not crazy about pastels, you say, oh, it's not for me, Stacy, but you need stocking stuffers. Hello, one in one stocking, one in another stocking. One in one stocking, one in another stocking. At this price, it is a steal of a deal. And again, I think had had somebody, had Michaels or Hobby Lobby had the um, ability to teach you how to use these, they would have been a sellout without question. I think the way that they are marketed as makeup 
made it a little confusing for some. So I'm going to debunk all of that confusion. We're going to play with them. I also have for you her little makeup applicators. You know, you get, I don't know how many are in here. Uh, that's a good question, Stacy. How many are in here? You get 30. They retail for $7.99. I think we have them for $3.99. These are nice if you if you're getting close to that $50 price point and you need to get over it. That's great. If you have a Dollar Tree, I don't know if you can do a better deal. It's up to you. But all of this product was at Michaels and they loved it more than than you loved it. But I think had you seen how to use it, you would have loved it as much. So yeah, because I'm sure they had somebody come to them and show them how to use these and they were just like blown away. And then it gets on the floor and there's nobody to show you how to use them. So their oopsies is our Wahoo could chew. Now, I'm going to take one of these blenders and I'm going to play on white paper to start with. And I'm going to play in the blues and the pinks and the purples because they're really pretty. And you've got a slight shimmer to all of them and, or a slight iridescent to all of them. Again, it is not makeup. It is a pan, it is a soft pastel. So if you've ever seen uh, Susan's Garden, oh, I should also tell you while I'm doing this, I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of my blue. While I'm doing this, I should tell you that uh, Spellbinders has picked up Susan's Gardens and they're doing a release with her, I think sometime in September, like September 10th ish. And she uses these all the time. Well, she uses her pan pastel all the time for her flowers. So if you are a Susan's Gardens fan, you're going to be able to find her at Spellbinders. But by George, get the get the pastels now because you're going to use them with the flowers that she's bringing out without question. We used to carry pan pastels online and in our store, but they came in they came in a round circle and really thin. They would break on in shipping like crazy. So we had to stop carrying them, but I have always been a huge fan of pastels because you can see just how creamy they are and just how easy they blend. That's what they're known for. And you can go in any direction that makes your heart happy. And I'm just picking up the blue and the purple and I'm blending them together just to make a background. I want kind of a skyish, nightish looking background. And the colors are easy. There's no demarcation line from where one starts and one stops. You don't have to set them with anything. You don't have to spritz them with anything. These are not like a perfect pearl. These are different. Perfect Pearl is a mica, a mica powder. This is a pastel powder. And it very little, these pans are gonna last you a really long time because a little goes a really long way. And I can just blend, blend, blend. And then let's maybe add some of the silver. And I could say, oh, you know, hmm, maybe I don't like that silver, hmm. Maybe I didn't want the silver in here after all. I don't know. What can I do? One of the nice things about pastels is that if you have a basic eraser, if you're not happy with what you've done, You can pretty much start again. I could go over that and now, if I wasn't happy, I could go in and add my pink. Maybe I wanted pink there. And add some pink in there. And maybe I go back and add some blues. Point is, you've got options. What happens if you're doing a beautiful flower. Let's say you've die cut out this fabulous flower that you love, 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 and you're adding a little bit of the pastels to color your flower, and then it just doesn't look right. 
Not a problem. Go in, erase. Give yourself the opportunity to try and play because we're only playing on white paper. No, oh, we got something and that is for sure. I have no idea what it is, but we've got something in. And I'm just going up and down and all over until I'm happy. And I'm gonna make a background because I'm gonna die cut from this. I don't need to do the whole thing. And you can see I'm going from blue to purple and I'm not changing my, my I'm not flipping over my um, little makeup sponge here. I'm just going in and out and in and out and letting that color blend. And if there was something I didn't like, I could take my eraser and erase it. Now, the longer you let it sit, the less opportunity you're going to have to fix that. It will set and then you got what you got. But can you imagine, I mean, just being able to easily color without having anything that's gonna get all over the place. It's not an ink, it's, it's, so it's not wet. It's, um, it's just this soft, creamy powder. It's not a mica. And you can do such beautiful things with it. Now, what if I also did this one? Hmm, okay, let's see. Let's grab some of this and do this one over here. Ooh, look at that color. And look at how it blends. It does blend kind of like makeup, but it's not makeup. Oh, I love these colors. So between cools and warms, and that's the two different palettes you have. So you want a cool and a warm, especially if you're just starting out. So that way you can play. And look at how vibrant that pink is just on its own. Pink is so vibrant, but then you can mix it in with everything else and tone it down and blend it without giving much thought. You're not gonna sit here and hem and haw and worry. You're just gonna go. Just give yourself permission to just put that color down and move it around. And swirl. And move and the darker. Okay, let's just finish this corner up here. I haven't picked up any of that color. And anybody can do this, any level of crafter. And like I said, if I was playing with die cuts, I could put it right onto my die cuts, but I'm going to die cut into these. I just took a little bit of the gold. All right, are we good? Kind of looks like a hot mess, but I'm okay. I'm gonna put these aside for right now. And then of course, the bigger palettes give you far more options. I mean, those are all metallic, so maybe we'll do some on black with those. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside. set. Pretty good. Don't have to spritz it. Don't have to spray it. Don't have to do anything. I'm going to set these aside for right now. And then I'm going to bring out the kaleidoscope dies because that's what we're going to cut with those. Now, what's a kaleidoscope die? Well, hmm. Here's the angel set. And you can see it is four distinct different dies. So 
these dies, these three here, one, two, three, are going to layer on top of each other, and then a background die. Now you can use the background die all by itself. You don't have to use that with anything else. But the idea is when you put them together, this is what you get. But you have options when you're playing with them. And then of course, I was able to give you extras. All of those are dies. And then I was able to give you the Oh Holy Night and Hark the, Angel, Hark the Herald Angels Sing and Joy to the World dies as well because I had extra space and you know me I am paying for a piece of metal this big and anywhere I can fit something extra in I'm going to do that now the die that we're going to play with right now is the the snowflake die and again four dies I think I'm going to back up just a little bit four dies to make up one set. This is the background die that when you cut it is going to cut little snowflakes in and little snowflakes out. This is the base die, which would be the base of your snowflake. And then you have two detail dies. One that's going to sit on top and then the third that's gonna layer on top. So when you're all done, you have a complete finished snowflake. And then if you choose to use the background, you can. So I'm gonna pull some of these over. I'm gonna put those there and I'm gonna pull these over. So this, these three would be the base die, which is the die that has the least amount of detail to it. It has the least amount of detail. Was I right the first time? Here, there, how about we go that way? Yes, the die that has the least amount of detail to it. No fancy cut-ins, nothing extraordinary about it, but it gives you a base to work from. And this is my new satin paper makes my heart happy. So I've done a base die in purple, in gold, and in a blue for you. All three the same. The next die is die number two. And this die is one that would sit on top of my base die. So here it is. It's a little bit more detailed, a little more open space, and that is going to sit on top of a base die. So when I cut this out, if I take this and put this on here, Look at what I get. So that's just taking die number one, die number two, and then the last die is very detailed. It's got all the little intricate pieces and fallouts. And this die looks like this die looks like that but when I cut it out and I lay it on top now you can see that the gold comes through, the purple comes through, the pink sits on top. You have options. And I haven't even played, haven't even played with the background die yet. And the background die is all those little snowflakes. 
yes, all of those pop out. <laughs> if you need stuff for a shaker card, holy smokes, artichokes, all of my little snowflakes popped out. You roll this through once and you've got more snowflakes for a shaker card than you could possibly imagine. But I haven't even played with that yet. The beauty of kaleidoscope dies is that you can take your base die, die number two and die number three, and no, they're not labeled. You can write on them. Some people want to make this die number three and this die number two and this die number one. It's whatever makes your heart happy. But I could take these two and put these two together and call it done. It's beautiful. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely gorgeous. Or I could take... these two and layer them and do you see the purple coming through and call it done nothing wrong with that that way you have a two-toned a two-toned snowflake i could take this one and put that on top of it and have there it really is entirely up to you how you layer these dies, how much interest, uh, in intricacy, intricacy, yes, you want it to be. How many layers do you want that final look to have? Layer all three of them. Very easy to do. But then I also have backgrounds. So this one comes, you know what, I'm going to layer this one and I've got this one. Okay, so base die, die number one, I call it die number one, die number two in silver, all done out of my satin paper, which is a heavyweight cardstock that really does have a satin finish. It doesn't glimmer, it doesn't glisten, it doesn't twinkle, it doesn't do any of that. It just has a polished satin finish. Just like satin nickel or whatever you see in the, the beautiful fixtures for, <laughs> for your faucets. So I've got a rose gold on top of a silver on top of a regular gold. And then I've got my matte black. See how it's got no shine to it at all? It's got a little bit of a sheen, but no glossy at all. But it's not flat like a, a cardstock. I can put that right behind. And then if I put it on my card base, then my snowflakes come through as my background that is how a kaleidoscope die works and no matter what set or which kaleidoscope die you have of mine they all work like that that you are able i could just take this and put this on my background and be done i could take these two and put these two on my background and be done. It is, I could take this one and that one and this one on my background and be done. What is it that you want it to look like? You have options, but then just be, uh, I guess you have options inside each individual set. So, oh, I don't know where my snowflake. So you, you have options inside each individual set. And what I mean by that is that you can take these and mix and match all of these. But every set comes with a different background die. What if I didn't want to use the snowflakes? Snowflake, snowflake, lots of snowflakes. What if I wanted to use the stars that come with the angel? There's the background die for the stars. What if I wanted to use that with my snowflake? In fact, what if I took 
and cut hmm because I can put that I can use my snowflakes and put it with a star background the yellow's not the prettiest I agree but what if I took and opened it up and pulled out my star die so now you can see all of them with all the added extras but what if I took out my star background dots off of it okay close enough and what if I took what if I took the rose gold because that's how I finished my my snowflake here what if I took the rose gold and did a star out of rose gold So let's cut us a piece of my new satin paper. Ooh, ah, it is pretty, I will tell you. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't be biased to my own stuff, but it is pretty. <laughs> and I love my dyes. I usually don't say, you know, I, I try not to do that because you may not love them, but I okay, I do. I love my dyes. They make my heart happy. All right. So let's bring over our Big Shot machine. I'm using a Sizzix Big Shot machine. You could use a Cuddlebug machine. You could use a Spellbinders machine. You could use a uh, Crafter's Companion machine. You could use a Couture Creations machine. This die is only four and a quarter by five and a half. It's a perfect A2. Now I am using a precision base plate. Please know, and this is a Sizzix product, and it only works with Sizzix products. You, well, they would like you to only use it with Sizzix products. This is a plate that is super heavy and made of chrome. It allows you to cut really intricate dies. Now, I'm using it on my magnetic platform, and that's not necessarily recommended, but I do it all the time. You do it at your own you know you're you're you've been forewarned they don't say to do it what i would do is if i was using just the regular platforms i would take these two platforms put them together these are what come with the machine and add my precision base plate on top if you can read the directions on how to use your precision base plate you're doing it wrong i need you to flip it over and if you have a precision base plate that is got a black top or kind of a coppery dark top those are different versions of it they all work the same there's no reason for you to get the chrome one unless you absolutely have to have the newest and latest and greatest and the only difference is the chrome keeps from having the dye you actually leave an etch mark into it so for me it, it, they all work as long as you've got one that's the most important thing and um i guess now that i've got this i might as well just use it so i'm going to use this precision base plate as my first clear plate normal or cutting plate normally you sandwich everything between two cutting mats and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I have a 2020 do's and don'ts of all the Sizzix Big Shot Machine, all of the family of Big Shot Machines. It's the 2020, I wanna say, was it 354, YouTube 354? I'm thinking it might've been 354, but it'll teach you all you need to know about a die cutting machine if you've never seen it used before. I'm gonna take my paper, I'm gonna take my die, I'm gonna put it Face down on my precision base plate so that the edges of my die go into my paper. I'm going to use an, a cut plate that I don't really care about because the pressure, let me 
can move those over there so I don't lose them. The pressure you're going to get when you send this through is going to leave an embossed mark into your cut plate. So if you don't want to use your do not cut plate, then just use an old one, an old plate. I'm going to twist it slightly on an angle. I don't want my die to go in this way. I will get a loud kathump and my camera will then not be happy with me and it'll probably start going bzzz, but we'll try. So if I put my die in where this line of the die, this edge of the die is parallel with the roller underneath my machine, it will give a kathump either in the beginning or the end. Let's see what happens. Oh, little creaks and cracks are okay. I'm gonna roll it through, roll it through, and there, there was my kathump. Now, you may want to rotate this die because it is a, a, a intricate die, and if it's stuck, then maybe, well, let's see if I can get it off. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna give it a rotate. And it's gonna kathunk again, cause I'm on a parallel, but that's okay. Let's let you hear what the kathunk sounds like. Kathunk is not bad. It's not gonna hurt your die. It's not gonna hurt your machine. It just might hurt your heart in that minute you hear it. All right, now I can pick up my die, turn it over and take a look at the back and see if it's cut. And it does, it looks like it's cut fairly well. So I'm going to move this out of my way, pull this over, and then all of these little stars are going to pop out. So you have all of these little stars to use for whatever makes your heart happy. <laughs> but there is my, there's my background. And then if I take my gold, and I put my gold on top and I take my silver and I put my silver on top and I take my rose gold again and put that on top. Even though the star isn't the background, isn't the one that comes with the, with the die set, all the backgrounds are interchangeable. And then I can put it on some, on my card base. And they're all interchangeable. Just as, gosh, what am I gonna do with these holy smokes? All right, whoosh! <laughs> Just as I could use my gold or I could use my what colors do I have Ooh, I've got rose gold and then I've got a purple base and then I've got a oh maybe I'll do a blue base a blue base on the rose gold with a silver in between and the blue is just basic cardstock so you can mix and mingle your satins with your regular cardstock so that it gives it even a different look so not everything is done in satin so now I've got my background done in satin and I've got my silver in satin so it just adds a little pop, a little flare to whatever you're working on. I could take that pink off and put my rose gold pink on and it gives it a completely different look. I could take my satin off the back and put on, ooh, the yellow's a little bright, <laughs> but maybe you like the yellow. The point is, no matter which set you go with, if you have more than one of the kaleidoscope sets, the backgrounds are going to completely interchange. And I could, 
I could take and put just a plain. Oh, isn't that pretty? So this one's just cut out of purple paper from my background. And isn't that pretty? It's all about the options that you have. Entirely about the options that you have. But then, if you recall, I did, I did these. Oh, and I'm so close. Okay, sorry, I am gonna finish, but I will be quick about it. I'm gonna bring over my soft pastel, not my makeup case. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get in here and I'm just gonna lay some color down. Kids can use this, adults can use this, seniors can use this, new crafters can use this. It is easy, it is um, affordable, and you feel accomplished when you're done because there's, there's no right and there's no wrong. You're just blending colors and it's on white paper. And if you don't like what you did, remember, I erased it. You, who, when do you get an opportunity to just erase your crafting and say, oh no, let's try again. <laughs> I think that's a big fear for everybody is that they're working on something and they're so worried they're going to get it wrong that they're afraid to even try. It's white paper and at a flash sale price, you can use these and try without the fear of, oh my gosh, I just invested so much money and I don't like them. I think I'm gonna add some pink. Oh, I grabbed a whole nother one and started with a whole nother one. Add some pink to this. Take away the, take away the I can't and think about what can be done. It is supposed to be creative. It's supposed to be arbitrary. It's supposed to be subjective. It is your project. And when it comes right down to it, no matter who you make this for, even if it's for yourself, by the time you finish with it, you're so impressed with yourself <laughs> because you start out thinking, oh my gosh, that's just a hot mess. And by the time you're done, you've created something that makes your heart happy and that others are like, wow, you did this. I will tell you the downside of that is that once you start making handmade cards or projects for people, little gifts for people, things like that, they never want anything store-bought again. And if you do buy them something from the store, they think that they've done something wrong and you're mad at them. So, and isn't, is that the, I mean, gosh, if that was the worst thing that ever happened to somebody, they got upset because you bought them something at the store. Wouldn't life be grand? <laughs> okay, am I close enough? Oh, all right, let's go for it. I went that way instead of this way. And when I say let's go for it, I mean let's add a little bit more because it's me. I love how easy they blend. It's not a crayon. It's a powder, but it's a creamy powder. It's a pastel to look like makeup. And like I said, the folks at Michael's, bless their pea picking heart, they liked it more than you did. Same with the people at Hobby Lobby. So when it didn't go over like gangbusters there, it became my opportunity to give you the chance to buy it at a price where you don't have to be fearful. Like, oh, what if I don't like it, Stacy? Okay. $7.99 for two palettes if you really don't like it. Gosh, there's tons of people I'm sure you could give it to because they're so easy to use. Okay, so I'm doing my snowflake and I've kind of put it on an angle so that it doesn't go kathunk. At an angle. I've got my my Sizzix Big Shot base plate down, the shim that goes with it that's laying right on top. I've got my 
precision base plate with the metal facing up. If you can read the directions, it's wrong. I've got my paper that has been pastelled with Jane Davenport's product, my Simply Defined Kaleidoscope die, my the background die, and a clear plate to sandwich, finish the sandwich, and I'm gonna send it on through. See, you didn't hear creaks and cracks and thumps and anything, really, right? Not so bad. That's because I put it on a diagonal. And then I'm going to rotate it. Let's see if I can rotate it. I don't know if I can get a good diagonal here. It might just, it might get a thump, but I'm willing to live with it. Mm, not so bad. Let's see what I got. I'm gonna pull the die out and see if it cut all the way through. I wanna see cut lines all over. And if I see something that doesn't look like it's cut, then I wanna put it back in and sandwich it and roll it through one more time. But it looks good, so we're gonna go with it. Oh, and then I've got all of these lovely little. <laughs> okay, so I told you, you're gonna get snowflakes for days. If you're doing a shaker card, well, you can get a twofer. You can get the background out of this to do one card and then do a shaker card with all of the little fallouts. And the snowflakes are what we call fallouts because they fall out of the paper. Very um, scientific term in the world of manufacturing for crafting. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can get some of them. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, so what started is just a hot mess on a blank piece of white paper. Oh my gosh, okay, there's all your snowflakes. <laughs> what to do with them? Oh, well, close your eyes. Close your eyes, okay, ready? Are your eyes closed? Okay, you didn't see anything or hear anything. All right, so there's my background with my pastels. How pretty is that, right? How beautiful is that? And I didn't ink anything, nothing, zero. How about we take this and I just cut this a little bit bigger so it looks like a mat. I know. Those of you who know me know, don't even ask where the trimmer is. It makes no difference. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm a freehand type of girl. So if we did that one, and then what if we did the purple as the base, and then the silver as the next one and then oh oh ho, ho, ho. okay what if I didn't do that and I did that as my top one and I did this as my mat. Oh yeah, okay, we're gonna put this together because that looks really good. So I'm gonna, instead of using the white as my mat, I'm gonna use the silver as my mat. If you could see me, you would see that my tongue is hanging out to the left side as I'm trying to cut. Just like I did when I was in kindergarten. Hasn't changed. So pretty. A 
but we'll get it there. Yeah, a little not so pretty right there. All right, I'm good. So how am I gonna get all of these down? Right? Not so easy, except for using sticky dots. These are my micro sticky dots. And again, this suggestion was not mine. A customer emailed us. Oh, can I get oh, my hands are open. A customer emailed us and said, I know how you can get your micro dots open because I always struggle with it. She said, take two pieces of washi tape or painter's tape, whatever you've got, put it on either side of the sticky dots and it'll open them. Now, what are sticky dots? Well, on one side, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. But on this side, there's hundreds of thousands of little dots that stick. Hundreds of thousands of little dots that stick. This whole sheet is filled with them. So what am I going to do? Well, I think I'm going to take this piece right here and lay it right on down on my sticky dots. Close it up, give a good rub, and anywhere there's paper that's touching those sticky dots, those dots are gonna adhere. You get 10 sheets for $9.99, and sticky dots are a game changer if you're doing intricate dyes. It, it really is a game changer for people. They give you the opportunity to peel up if you need to reposition, but then once they go permanent, they go permanent. So if I lay this down, Layer number one, down. No wet glue, nothing, down. Now let's open it up again and let's take our next layer. Which was the purple. And let's just lay that there. Let's make sure I've got it up, I'm going the right way. Yeah, that looks good. Lay it down. And anywhere that paper hits the dots, the sticky dots are gonna stay. Now I keep the liner on top just because anywhere there is no paper, there's sticky dots left. And I can come back and use those sticky dots for something else. I'm not willing to give up all those sticky dots when I know I can use them for let's say the words. I could come back and put the words in there and pick up words. Now let's layer that right on top. Then my next layer is the silver. Go back, pick up my sticky dots, and I think I'm gonna kind of pick them up kind of in the middle because I know that there's still some left and rub, rub, rub. And line it up. I'm a little off, but. And again, I can move them around. I've got time. So you may say, what's the difference on this die between level two and level three, which is the last one. Can you see how these parts of the snowflake are solid, 
but these in the center are open, so you see the purple coming through, but here you do not. Well, with the last one, all of them are open. So it puts the detail image on that silver. It still lets that purple come through. Oh, how pretty. Okay, let's just do it. Get the last one down. I think I can probably put this one here. Press, press, press. So those of you who already have sticky dots know that they, they really are a game changer when using intricate dies. And last but not least, the final detail. I'm slightly off. So I'm just gonna pick it up because I can pick it up. I have time, move it where I need it to go, and then lay it back down. That's the beauty of sticky dots. It's not a wet glue, it's not messy, it gives you time to move things. And using the beautiful pastels, absolutely beautiful pastels, I was able to create that background without any problem. And again, not makeup and and don't use makeup on your crafting it's not made for crafting and it doesn't the it, it, you know it it's not made to withstand the test of time but gosh for 7.99 for the two palettes or if your budget allows the two larger palettes now mind you all of these colors there are no two colors that that are the same so these colors are there's none of the same in here. You have different all the way around. So if you bought all of it, well, then you would have all of those colors to play with. And they do come with these little cards, the big palettes come with these little cards. And on the back, you can put your colors down so you know what you have. So easy to do, affordable, only because of somebody else's oopsies. <laughs> And remember, I said you could, if you wanted to, take them and what if I had my blue here, but I wanted it to be, um, I wanted to add something to it. What do I want to add? Do I want to add the pinks? Do I want to add, and I've got the purple here, and I've got here. Hmm, what if I wanted to add some of this darker blue? Hmm. What if I wanted this to have that more wintry feel and you don't have white paper handy. What happens if you've got scraps? Can you put this on top of other paper? Of course you can. It doesn't have to be white. I think most often um, Susan's Gardens people, they don't use white paper. They color the pinks or the yellows or the purples or whatever color they've made their flowers. You don't have to leave it to what it is. And it blends so seamlessly. I mean, I'm gonna use the purple on this because I want you to see how it hides that blue. Let's say you didn't want the blue, but you had a piece of blue scratch paper left. Well, you just pull these out and you change the color of the paper. You're not limited. It's not often you get to say that about a product where you're just not limited. Well, now I've made this all purpley. Do I have a blue? 
Oh, let's make it purpley. And then I suppose I could take, oh, see, see how pretty the snowfall underneath it is? So one of the backgrounds is a snowfall background. This comes with, this comes with the baubles set, the ornaments set. And look at how pretty that's becoming. I changed the blue, easy to do. And then I decide what I want on top of it. Oh, I've got options. Nope, this way. Yes. Now look at what I've done. On a piece of paper, well, I thought I wanted blue, but then I didn't want blue, and I don't want to pull out inks. I don't want to wait for them to perhaps dry, or I don't want to get all messy. And with a soft pastel, you've got the option to do this. If you have pan pastels, these will just complement them. These will add to your assortment for a fraction of the price of a pan pastel. Yes, you get more with a pan pastel in the pans, I agree. But at this price, to have a whole bunch of new colors to play with, you can't go wrong. And I'm sure that you know Michael's intent was that you would see these and you would know what to do with them. But sometimes it's not so easy to know when you're sitting there looking at it on a wall in a, in a store. Sometimes you have to ask, what do these do? And that is why we support our independent retailers so much because they're the ones who can tell you what to do with them. Which is why I say, if you have an independent retailer, cherish them. They're the ones who are able to explain to you this is how you use it, this is why you use it, this is when you use it, and this is what you don't do with it. Just cherish them. All right, I changed the whole, I left the frame blue. But just while we were talking, I recolored the whole thing. Maybe you're not a stamper and you don't have lots of inks to play with. You can do this, I promise you. And if you didn't like the rose gold that I pulled, we could make it very striking against the matte black and really have it pop. Love the matte black. So I love the matte black to do the top layers because it just adds that finishing detail. I love the matte black for the top layers. The new satin black. And if you didn't love the black, maybe you love the snow falling behind. What made your heart happy? It all works. And it's made for any level of crafter. We don't love this yellow. I get it. We don't love this yellow. <laughs> it's hard for me to say that because I love yellow. Um, maybe this is more um, uh, goldenrod. But it's not my favorite color by any stretch of the imagination. This is this is a little bright. But what if I took some of this? I 
and toned it into something completely different. Maybe I like that better. Or maybe I like the brightness here better. Maybe you've got tons of scrap paper and had no idea how you were gonna get rid of them. Just change them into something else. Reinvent them. And I don't even mind that I'm leaving some of the tones of yellow underneath it. It just, it just helps it. <laughs> it tones it down. It's not so in your face. So I would, I would definitely color it before I die cut it. But I want you to see that you don't have to leave it what it is. Totally different. Both beautiful. And maybe you like the yellow. And if you do, okay. It's just more goldenrod than it is yellow to me. Blend away. Let your heart be happy. Pick up some of the other colors and go in. And blend away. And I don't mind that my colors blend into each other on my palette. I'm good with that. They put these colors here for a reason. You could even do a beautiful sunset with the stars and sunset colors. And then, my gosh, and then have, have a, a, a little nativity scene down here with, there's just options, 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 options. All right, so what did we talk about? We talked about the pan, well, it, they're, they're soft pastels. Pan pastels are, a, I believe it's a registered trademark, so I don't wanna call these pan pastels, but they are soft pastels that are in a pan form. And these little things are called pans, they're in a pan, versus being in a chalk type or a, a stick type pastel. They are creamy, they're luscious, they're easy to use, they are not makeup. There are lots and lots of YouTubes out there. Even I have some that are really old using the Susan's Gardens Pan Pastels years ago when she was with Sizzix and I did a YouTube using her flowers. But if you have never tried a soft pastel and you want to play without spending a fortune, instead of spending $40, spend $17.99 or instead of spending $28 spend $7.99 and give yourself the permission to try and then if you're not crazy about them then pass them off to a friend and you don't feel like you've made this huge investment in something that you that you're not crazy about uh, pan pastels are about this big and they're about, I want to say they're about $7.99 a pan. So this is kind of like getting memento dew drops where you want all the colors, but you don't want full size pads, ink pads. You just want little cubes, little ones so that you have lots of colors for the same price it would have cost you to get several full size pads. Maybe you don't need this pink in a big pan. Maybe this is enough for you. And you saw they, how they last. They just go and they go and they go. So this is the flash sale. It is limited. It really is. The little applicators, they're great. If you want them, they're 30 for I think $3.99. They're fabulous. If you've got a dollar store, go visit them. You might be able to get a better deal. I don't know. I just know that they're no longer at Michael's and they need to go. <laughs> Hello everybody at Michael's. <laughs> Next time you see me at the show, please don't glare at me. <laughs> we love you and we send people to you all the time. 
<laughs> the bigger kits come with the little the little um, uh, palette so that you can do your colors and mark your colors so you know what you've got. We played with those. I, I made the background for this card, which I think came out pretty darn good for somebody who doesn't actually finish anything in a YouTube. Wahoo, kachoo. I suppose I could finish this one and be happy. <laughs> but, and I actually think I like it with the rose gold on the back. I think it just pops a little bit more with the rose gold on. I think that's so pretty. But the background from the rose gold is from the, the angel. Just love that and I could finish that one but we will not <laughs> I explained to you what kaleidoscope dies are <laughs> what kaleidoscope dies are oh let me pull that one that's this one they are a series of dies that um, are made up of three layering dies so a a base die, a detail die, and then your finishing touch outline die, just to pull it all together. And see, this is where I would do it in that matte black on this little bobble die. I think that, that would look great on that matte black. They all layer together. You have options on if you want to use one die, two dies, or all three dies, and then you've got the background die to finish it off. And you will see that in the samples, the girls have used the background die all by itself without any anything else, just the background die. And for $29.99, I think those of you who are die cutters, you already know what kind of value that is. I cannot do them for a penny less, but my goodness, what you get. Holy smokes artichokes, or if you want to change the whole look. Nope, don't like the green. <laughs> don't like the green at all. <laughs> but I've got a green bobble. And then a pink. And then a dark green outline. Okay, you got options. All right, so we talked about kaleidoscope dyes. They are limited. My kaleidoscope dies tend to sell out faster than anything else. We also talked about the new paper. Metallic satin cardstock. 10 sheets, five colors, $4.50 for a pack. And my favorite, my favorite absolutely is the matte black and I'm going to be I, I, I'm going to be I'm hoping that this can be a staple here because I know I'm going to use this in the next several YouTubes. It's just perfect. I love it. It was it was my happy day when that came in. So we've got the metallics and the black and then let's show you. Well, here we go. Here's the metallics and the black. And One, two, three. All the, all the Jane Davenport, who is a doll. She is so funny. She's got a great sense of humor and, and we just got along so well and her husband's just a dream. Don't forget, color your paper. Doesn't have to stay the color it is. You can make it whatever color makes your heart happy. No ink needed. And if you really don't like what you did, grab your eraser. And try again. Not often in crafting do you get a do over. <laughs> Try again. All right, so the kaleidoscope dies. Here is the first. This is, well, this is the angel. So the background was the stars that I was using. There's the background. And remember, all those little stars came out, perfect for shaker cards. And then the three, three different layering dies. So when you're all done, 
you're looking at something like this, but then I gave you an extra wing and a harp and a big, big star and hark the herald angels sing and joy to the world and oh holy night. All of that comes in the set for $29.99 and they are a true A2 size, perfect for your, your cards, absolutely perfect. Here is the storyboard for it. So here is a die number one that has been used with my satin and we added a little bit of an embossing to it because it's thick. So you can use a squishy and a knock knock and add a little bit of an embossing line around it. Here it is just on its own. Here's die number two. She's beautiful just by herself. If you only wanted to use that die, you could just use that die. And then there's die number three, which finishes her outline. So when you are all said and done, there you go. And then again, all the extras, because I pay for that metal, I'm going to use it. So here is our Oh Holy Night Angel. Then I have the baubles that I was playing with. And there's uh, even more extras in this set. So here is the snowdrift background. That blue one that I had out here for so long. See? Hard to believe that that is what makes that. That funky dye right there <laughs> makes your snow drifts. So when you're all said and done, that's what you've got. But again, I've got extra space. I gave you more snowflakes. I gave you holly leaves. I gave you another little Christmas bauble. I gave you season's greetings. You've got, you've got holly leaves and little berries and it's separated and then you've got them all together. If I had space, I fit something in. That's number two. Let's see the storyboard. So Elena has done um, a satin cardstock using a squishy and a knock knock to get an embossed look. Here it is just die cut out of paper. That's your die number one. Here's your detail die. Again, could be used all by itself. It's beautiful enough to use all by itself. There's your, uh, your frame die to go around it to add the final little accent. And when you are all done, that is what you are looking at. And you can mix and match any way you see fit, anything that you want to do. You could just use these two together. You could just use these two together. You could just use these two together. You could, I mean, you, you, you got the concept, right? Right. And then last is the snowflake that I was using all day today. And when it's all said and done, this is what you're looking for. And here is the storyboard. So you've got the background die. You've got two opportunities to emboss with a squishy and a knock knock. There's the background, the main die or the base die, die number one. Here's die number two, which also has some detail for you to use a squishy and knock knock with. There is your top die, your die number three. And when you put them all together, there you go. And again, you can use the snowflakes just by themselves or layer them any way you want. And you can use the background with either of the other two sets. So that's what Elaine has done here. <laughs> God bless Elena. Okay, so the angel comes with the stars, 
but here we've put her with drifts of snow coming down in purple. <laughs> Elena used um, colors that would pop so you would be able to see the difference. And here she is with the snowflakes. So this is using the backgrounds from the two other sets. Then you have the baubles using the stars from the angel, background from the angel, and the snowflakes, the background from the snowflake set. That looks really nice on the baubles. It really looks good. Then you have the snowflake set using the snow drift that comes with the baubles and the stars that come with the angel. <laughs> so you mix and match any way you want if you have all three. And these dies are one and done. They will not be back. And this is my only Christmas release. Last things last. The sticky dots, 9.99, 10 sheets. You know it's a great value if you already have them. And if you do, let people know that you love them because they really, it took a long time to get them and they really are, they make my heart happy. Okay, now let's get to samples. So, the girls. Claire. So this is Claire. I'll just stuff out of my way. Maybe tilt down. Nope, tilt up. There we go. So this is Claire. So pretty. And this is Claire. Where she just used the background, gosh, did she even do, no, she just used the top and put the top right down on a card base and colored in. And this is Claire. What do we think of that? Yeah, see, I'm gonna get the light if I go that way. I think that's best. There's Claire with the Christmas baubles. And here is an angel. Look at how good the satin paper looks. <laughs> Make my heart happy. Okay, and remember you got all of those snowflakes? Gosh, with the with the baubles, you got tons of snowflakes as extras. And here's the snowdrift die as the background. And they just used the snowflakes to make this card. And they used, um, they used quite a bit of the uh, Jane Davenport on this as well. So this is using the odds and ends, the freebies that I throw in there because I've got the space. Now this one was done with the rose gold and the gold satin paper and then also the pastels, the Jane Davenport pastels. She's lovely. And Claire didn't even lay, she only did two layers. She didn't use all three layers on her. She used uh, die number one, the base die, and die number two. She didn't put on the last layer. But still, look at the detail in her. And then, look at how this is beautiful. She's used the snowdrift background and the baubles. So pretty. And here she used just the snowdrift background and she didn't use any of the dyes anywhere else, just the snowdrift background and then put a card topper right in the middle. She cut this out of some, out of some paper and put it right in the middle with the snowdrift background. And here is another one of her snowflakes. And here she used the snowflake background to go with it.
and another one of her angels. And here's the, the really big star that you get with it. So you've got a star background and they're smaller and then you get a really big star to go with her. And then with the baubles, there was a little tiny bauble that I added in because there was space. That's all she used on this card was the little extra tiny bauble that you got with it. Is that the cutest thing ever? With a teeny tiny bauble, where's that bauble? Oh. Well, I just made a mess everywhere, but that's okay. That's what I do. Cutest little teeny tiny bauble thrown in. <laughs> because I had the space. Really nice, Claire. And then, how gorgeous is this? Again, done with the uh, Jane Davenport. So pretty. So that's Claire. Then I have Miss Belinda. I showed you this one in the beginning. There's Belinda's snowflake. And here is her angel. Lovely, right? The girls do such a beautiful job and they all are different. So everybody's got their own style and their own feel of, and their own creativity and they meld it together seamlessly with these samples so that there's something for absolutely everybody. And here's her baubles and I love this. Her Christmas ornaments. just using paper. This was paper. All right, and then we have Doris. I showed you this one in the beginning. And let me pull the rest of hers over. And this was also done. Okay, so here's your season's greetings from one of the <laughs> one of the sets. Here's the little stars that fell out of the background die from the angel. Here's the little snowflakes that fell out of the background die for the snowflake die. Here's the little holly and berries you get in the baubles die. She's got a little bit of everything going on here. And yet she didn't use any of the main dies at all. She used all the extras, all the little goodies. And here is her snowflake die. Ooh, that just makes my heart happy. Look at how good that paper looks. Ah. So wait, there's more colors coming. Wait, over the next several weeks, I'll be launching four more sets of, of Simply Defined satin papers. Just you wait. Ah, oh, gorge. And here's another one of her snowflake dyes in a completely different color combination. And these are all by Doris. Here's a baubles with on, so on vellum, <laughs> this is vellum with the background from the angel using 
Oh my goodness, Jane Davenport's pastels. <laughs> How and gold satin paper. How fab is that? That's just wonderful. Fabulous. I love them. I am so blessed to have such talented folks work with me. The girls are just absolutely amazing. And what's even better is that they're my friends. <laughs> so how can you go wrong? Okay, and here's her angel with the harp instead of the horn because you get the harp too. And then bam, set it up. And somebody is going to love, love, love this card. And just a simple snowflake. She just used the background layer and the top layer and just made a simple snowflake card. Not a lot of fuss, not a lot of muss. She used sticky dots to put it all down. Oh, she got a few. Oh, I've got three more. Holy smokes. Okay, I've got three more angels from her. What do you think of that? Is that beautiful? Soft and elegant and understated. It's not bam, it's oh, so pretty. And then I have done with the gold satin paper, vellum and the harp and the Jane Davenport uh, pastels, soft pastels. It's an SMS YouTube class. There goes the fire trucks. And then a bobbles. Christmas ornaments. And these are all Doris and I have one more for Doris. One last angel. And that will leave us with Elena. No paper piecing, you just layer them on top of each other. So Elena, I showed you this angel. This was the first this was the first card I saw done with my collection and I almost no, I think I did cry. <laughs> I just was so she just took my breath away. Elena took my breath away with this card. And here we have the snowy background, the season's greetings, and a decoupage on top. So the background being used all by itself, the season's greetings being used all by itself, and then a decoupage, a card topper right on top. And here is her angel. Look with the butterfly background paper. Right? The foiled butterfly background paper just as beautiful with the angel. And here, ha! Here she did. <laughs> I should have known better. <laughs> she took the star background and cut it out and then did a cut out a nativity scene from paper and put it on top. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course she did. Here I thought I was so smart and clever. Turns out she was smarter and cleverer than I was. <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe the maybe it's that way. Maybe, maybe the thingy is this way. I get confused. Yeah, maybe, I don't know, is it this way? This, the SMS, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it might be that, you may wanna go that way. Oh, I don't know, I've got myself backwards and forwards again. Let's go back to samples, that I know. 
<laughs> it would be funny if I did it wrong. I have to learn. Everything's in kind of reverse. <laughs> and I'm old. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky to get my shirts on forward. <laughs> It's a beautiful card. It's Elena. She did a great job. And what, um, <laughs> yes, so you've got the, the baubles all fully layered and then that beautiful damask background paper. Lovely. And here she did another one. Oh, to me, that's just striking. And here, now, I hope I can get this on camera. She used the snowflake background and she put it on top of, or did she emboss it? Oh, she embossed it. She took a piece of, of um, damask paper and used her background and did an embossing with a squishy and a knock knock to get dimension to it. And I'm not sure if I can get it on an angle or not for you so that you can see that there's little snowflakes all over on that damask. And then she fussy cut out. And her finished snowflake, just out of white with that pop of Christmas teal, winter teal for a center bling. And her last but not least is her snowflake in the blacks and the silvers. All right. So these were all by Elena. So, holy smokes, artichokes. I told you there was a lot. I didn't fib. <laughs> and hold on, let me tilt back. And I told you, somebody else's oopsie was our oh happy day with the Jane Davenport product because really I honestly believe if the larger box stores had a way to teach you how to use some of these products they were right to buy them they were right to bring them into their stores but without knowing what to do with them it makes it kind of hard which again is where your independent retailer comes in is it maybe the maybe the heart's that way is it that way Oh, Doris, I don't remember. We're going to have to put a sign up. Point this way. <laughs> so we're thankful that Hobby Lobby and Michaels had the forethought and the, 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 the creativity to see how fabulous the Jane product is. But unfortunately, the, they, they lack in the, the, the teaching ability to show how to use them to their best. And now, now you get to take advantage of them. $40 worth of product for $17.99 or $24 worth of product for $7.99. And then my simply defined kaleidoscope dies. This is my only Christmas for the year. And when they are gone, they are gone. So, and then of course my brand new satin paper, which I'm drooling over. And there are four more packs to be released over the next couple weeks. And, um, or the next couple months or so, uh, maybe a month and a half. Anyway, they're coming. I can't wait to show you. And they are all done as assortment sets. So as opposed to getting five or 10 of one color with the exception of the black, because you will use that satin black for everything. The other packs are two of five colors. So you get a nice assortment and they all coordinate. And it just, my heart was so happy. All right, it is me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com, hoping you found wherever it is that you should be looking to subscribe. And then there'll be a couple YouTubes for you coming up shortly for if you wanted to see more, stay tuned, just let this roll out and you'll see a couple YouTubes coming up for you to click on and you can see what we did last week or perhaps one of our more popular videos. All right, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Done with today's class. I will see you next Saturday. Bye, everyone.